Hello, well, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking about reciprocity.com, the sharing economy proofreading platform that I am trying to build. And in this particular video, what I want to talk about is how do you actually build a amazing analysis section in your scientific research paper? So this is part of my series, I call it uh, Nerd Out Wednesdays, where I could do anything, talk about anything that I think are, is interesting in science. I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. So I'm hopefully, I think these, this particular video is going to be very helpful for anybody that is interested in writing up some sort of scientific article. Maybe it's for a high school scientific or science fair. Maybe it's another, uh, maybe it's I'm thinking in my head it is for graduate students that might be interested in going and developing their own scientific research a little bit more so in particular in business schools so and in this particular video what I'm going to get into is detail what exactly you write in a scientific analysis section or analysis section in a paper and then what are some different tips and tricks in, in terms of figuring out how to actually write this in a way that it's going to be easier to get through the review process or maybe make allow you to get an A in your science fair. So here we go. The analysis section is, is essentially the part of the paper where you detail all of the different things that you are planned to do or you did in your scientific study. So this would be thinking about the different kind of analytical techniques. So maybe you just did, so for example, maybe you just did simple averages and you looked at what the averages are or you did t-tests, what are called t-tests between the averages. Maybe one day I'll talk about those too. But you look at what the different averages are and you compare the different averages between two different groups and you can compare those two different groups. Maybe you did something a little bit more sophisticated like a regression analysis. You could look at my old video where I talk about that, where you can get into, talk about and do a regression analysis. There's different kinds of techniques that you could do, right? And you detail those different techniques of regression analysis. Maybe it was a logit where you look at a binary outcome, a zero one outcome. Maybe it was a Poisson or a negative binomial distribution where you look at the different, uh, you, you look at different count outcomes, for example, they, they do depend on different outcomes. I think those are the most, uh, the, the most relevant and the most um, robust and the ones that you see a lot. There might be survival analysis, for example, which is kind of like a logit. Um, it's kind of like a binary outcome, but what you're looking at in a survival analysis is the time to when a particular event happens, what is called a failure event that happens. There's all these different techniques that you can talk about. Maybe that is just the analytical part, but then maybe you could talk about the different ways that you de designed your kind of your experiment or you designed your study, the way that you maybe um, sort of uh, sorted the data that you had, or maybe you looked at it and you asked a certain set of questions that were impertinent and important, all the different kind of questions that you asked, or you did an interview and you had certain kinds of questions that you asked, all of these things that you would think about that you might actually put into the analysis section. And that is detailing, or then that is telling the reader, this is what you did, right? This, that's all really what you're doing. You also should put in there, and this is really important, is both why is that particular analysis important so you you just write in if you just write in i did this it's not going to tell the reader why you did that right so science is all about explaining why you did something that is so important to think about why you did a particular thing so you have to write why that's important why you did that particular technique why is that so um, relevant to the particular data you're looking at right so if you look at regression maybe the data that you have behaves like what is called normally distributed data like in a classroom setting where you have um, people that have an average and to generally that there is some sort of bell curve, what's called the bell curve, right? Or maybe you did interviews because that is the, the easiest way to get at some sort of, maybe you're doing some, some exploratory research, right? And you're trying to get at that exploratory thing 
why you're doing that particular thing. So you have to do interviews to find out why something happened, right? Or maybe you did participant observation. You have to figure out, well, the only way that I can get in there and understand what's going on is I have to be sort of a fly on the wall and get in there and and just be part of what everybody else is doing, right? So that is important to think about the why you're doing it and write down the why you're doing it. And then the second thing that's so important, not just writing down the particular analytical technique, but think about the limitations. Talk about the limitations of the method. Well, it's great to do this, but it doesn't necessarily hold under these conditions, right? Or it doesn't work under these conditions. And here's the cool thing. If you write that, you can forecast and you can write in, well, we know it doesn't hold under these particular conditions, but look, if you go to the robustness section, and I talk about that in the results and when i talk about the video about the results how do you write up results you write in robustness section and write down the different details so what you're trying to do essentially what you're trying to do is detail why the particular technique that you did is novel it's interesting and it's useful right so if, if you don't know what that where i get that from it's actually from a patent uh, it's novel it's it's interesting and it's useful um that it is it, it that it, that it, that it is particularly useful and it's applicable to what you're doing right so that is that's the important thing is tell the reader that it is the most important thing that you are doing or this particular technique fits very very well with what you're doing um, and it is very practical for what you're doing. And then what you're forecasting is the reviewer is going to be always thinking the, per the maybe it's the maybe it's your teacher or professor. They're always going to be thinking, well, yeah, okay, that's great. But then there's this. So what ends up happening? What you should think about is this. You can forecast and you can say, oh, but we know that this happens, right? We know that this happens. Go take go check out the robustness section, and then you can detail all of the stuff of what happens, right? So you want to forecast the sort of problems that they're going to foresee with what you're doing when you're writing it up. And those problems, you could say, oh, I did that in the robustness section. You just make a little note in the written work saying, go look out the robustness section. We know that maybe all people don't behave normally. It doesn't have normally distributed data that there's maybe different distributions and we can go and and look and you can say, go check out the go check out the um, go check out the robustness section. There are going to be some some ways that we mitigated this particular problem. We know it doesn't hold here. It holds pretty well for most of the cases, but then there are limitations over here. So you want to detail. Uh, basically, you're detailing everything that you did in the analysis section. So in summary, you, did, you detail everything that you did in the analysis section or that you're planning on doing. Then go through and talk about why it is novel, why it is interesting and applicable and particularly useful to the data that you have. And then as you're doing that, thinking about forecasting the limitations or the doubts that that reviewers are going to have. And then you write in those particular things and say, um, go check out the robustness section. We did think about this. Go check out the robustness section. And then that's what that's going to do is that it's going to make the reviewer think that you were very, very rigorous with what you did. And you were right. You were very, very rigorous with what you did. And it's going to help you get through the next step. It's going to help you get a better grade, for example, because you're thinking like a scientist. A scientist is always thinking, this is all great, but there are all these problems with it, right? So there's there's all these pros and all these cons. And then that's what you're thinking about with the particular method and the analysis that you did. The other, I want to actually point out one extra additional tip, if you're still following along, is in order to demonstrate some of this stuff with the technique that you're doing, the, the best thing that you should do that I find is actually showing some of the data and showing it in kind of really interesting and novel ways. So maybe you're doing interviews, for example, and you detail some of the written, maybe the quotes that you found um, and how it fits with what you, the questions that you are doing. Or maybe you are, um, um, maybe it's just a little bit though. You don't want to mix the results section and the analysis section, right? So that's why I'm kind of hesitating with that. But maybe you are doing a um, maybe you're doing some sort of regression analysis, for example. 
Well, you can show different tables of showing how it fits with the different regression techniques, right? Or you can fit or you can detail, here's the data, this is what the, the this is what the, the outcome looks like over time. We're not actually going to do that here. And this is why it sort of fits with the method that we're doing. And a lot of really good people, a lot of good research articles sort of do that kind of stuff where they illustrate these different, you know, the, the different graphs and stuff before they actually get into show that it's actually suitable with what they're doing. And the method is actually very suitable. They'll kind of detail and show you some really cool broad graph and they'll show oh this method actually fits over here and this is why we're choosing this particular method because of x y and z that we see on the graph so that is it that's all i wanted to tell you, tell you about today hopefully you like this video if you did do the old thumbs up appreciate it so much you can also do the old as well that is totally fine um watch some of the older videos if you're interested in this kind of stuff i'm putting out videos i uh, on a daily basis at this point trying to make sure that I'm being as helpful as I possibly can to as many people as I can. Um, I, I appreciate everything that you do. And if you're interested in the reciprocity project, the E is spelled with a three. So you can look up the E is spelled with a three. And, um, and what I'm trying to do is kind of help out graduate students with this. I'm just, that's one of my main goals with what I'm doing is to help out graduate students, make sure it's easier for them to do their research and stuff like that. So uh, once again, thank you for following along. I do appreciate everything that you are doing. And for those of you who already subscribed, you're so cool. Um, I'm going to give you one of those. Thank you so much. Take care and uh, have a good day. I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.